Luetti contacted me recently and asked me if I would like to review this product. It's their latest portable power station. It's the EB3A. It's got a 268 watt hour capacity and it's supplied by lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are more stable and more durable than normal lithium iron batteries. To put that in perspective, you can charge this unit 2,500 times and after that the batteries will be down to 80% capacity. That's quite phenomenal really, so you should get a very long life out of this unit. It's fitted with a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter that's capable of 1200 watt surge, as well as the AC socket. There are seven DC sockets. There is a cigarette lighter socket, two 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter sockets, two USB A sockets, a USB C power delivery socket, and a magnetic charging pad on top of the unit. Now the unit weighs 4.6 kilograms, so it's very portable. There are several ways of charging it. You can use solar power, AC power, or a mixture of both. Personally, I think it's a really well-made unit. Oh, I forgot to mention, it comes with a two-year warranty as well. I consider myself very fortunate to live in the countryside, but one of the disadvantages of living in the countryside is that all the electrical lines, and the telephone lines for that matter, are above ground. They nearly always run through trees, we always get power cuts here in the countryside, but they usually only last, you know, a few minutes to an hour, so that's no big deal. But over the last two years, we've had three long power cuts, two of which were five days long. And because of that, I've had to come up with a system for dealing with prolonged power cuts. And this power pack is going to be very, very handy for that situation. Just over a week ago, after three years of waiting, British Telecom arrived and connected a fibre line to our property. So we've now got ultra fast broadband and fibre to the premises. One of the consequences of going on to ultra fast broadband is that the phone is no longer on the landline. It's actually connected to the router and we use voice over IP. So whereas before when we've had power cuts, the first thing I would do is come in here and just connect the router up so that we could get broadband. Now there's the router and the phone that need to be connected. One thing that BT sell if you get a power cut is an uninterrupted power supply that will keep this and the phone running, but it only lasts a few minutes. I think it's about 60 pounds. So this thing has actually got an uninterrupted power supply feature, which means that you can leave this plugged into the mains and connect the router and the phone to it. And if you have a power cut, everything will stay running. So I'm going to test that out now. The power's gone off on the phone. That is just the battery there saying that uh, the power's gone off. And as you can see, we've got no lights on the router. So what I'm going to do now is turn on the AC. So everything is back to normal now. The internet is on, the phone is on, and it's using, let's say 20 watts. So if we say that we've got 260 watt hours of usable energy, then we've got around about 13 hours of running the phone and the internet. So now it's my intention to try the uninterrupted power supply feature. That means you could leave this plugged in constantly, connected to the phone and the router and anything else that you wanted to actually keep going in the event of a power cut. And it should seamlessly swap over from one to the other. So what I'll do now is I'll plug the mains in. So as you can see now, we're actually charging via the mains. It's in standard charging mode. You'll also notice that we've got UPS appeared on the display there. So it's now in UPS mode. We've got the mains feeding power to the power station and the power station is actually providing power to the phone and the router. So there's absolutely no problem with this charging uh, while it's connected to the equipment. You can actually use it as a pass-through system. So you can charge and supply power to equipment at the same time with this particular power station. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the switch for the mains and we'll see what happens. Now, that is impressive. <laughs> so you can see there's no power going into the machine now. Absolutely no change at all to the router. That's still online and it's still showing blue. And the phone has not switched off. You can see that little red light there. So that was seamless and I'm really impressed with that. The UPS system works a treat. And what I'm going to do now is put the power back on again. So we should see this charge appear on the, what's on the left hand side there. So that's the power switch back on again. And you can see it's gone back onto UPS mode. 
So if you actually want to keep something powered 24 hours a day and not lose it during a power outage, then this power station is ideal for that. I really do find it annoying that this display turns off after 60 seconds every time. It is seriously annoying. So yes, UPS, 100%, I think it's brilliant. If you were out and about in a tent, say, or in a caravan and you needed some form of power, I'm just going to show you what this power station is capable of. And I've got a low wattage light. I've got one, two, three phones to charge, a tablet that runs off the uh, power delivery port. And I'm just going to show you what this thing is capable of for dealing with these sorts of devices. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the AC, which the light is connected to. And I'll turn the light on. And you can see it's actually drawing six watts. So we'll get a long run out of that one particular light. So that's showing six watts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the DC circuit and that will power up the phones and the tablet, which are all on charge. So I'll turn that on now. So that's the DC on charge. And now the output has gone up to 29 watts so that's including the light so you could run like this for approximately eight and a half hours and you can see that as well as the ac we now have the dc shown on the display so it's telling you what's going on you'll notice there that it also says eco eco is set up with the app and it can actually be set so that it will turn the power station off if it is only using a small amount of power for either the ac or the dc side and you can set it to turn off after a certain number of hours it's set up to turn off after four hours now and i think you can go down to three two and one hours so you can go to bed leave this light on say and then it will turn itself off after whatever time you've set on the eco mode so i've connected this drill to the ac port on the power station and it says it's a 650 watt drill So it's running at around about 230 watts under no load. So what I'm going to do is actually drill with it and we'll see what happens when there's some torque on it and whether the actual power station copes with it or not. So that's shown around about 400 watts. So there's no problem at all using this corded drill. And if you actually wanted to be able to use your cordless tools out and about, say on the allotment, or if you're working the bottom of the garden, or out and about on a work site where there's no power, you can charge your cordless batteries up. It's drawing 45 watts, so at least four hours worth of charging the batteries, probably more than that. It's just an indication though of what this thing is capable of. If you don't have power, you basically just pick it up and take it wherever you need to go. There's no noise, so it's not like taking a generator anywhere. Ideal for smaller jobs. So it opens up all sorts of possibilities and it is basically just a case of picking the unit up and taking it with you. So it's very portable and it's very handy for taking some power with you wherever you want to go. Now the applications that I've shown you are all around the house and the garden and that, but it works just the same for when you're out and about camping or you know even if you're in your car going on a long journey somewhere it means that you can charge pieces of equipment or run pieces of equipment instantly just by taking this out the boot or wherever you've got it and plugging your equipment into it now a 600 watt inverter on this is really impressive so i've just run a high load off the power station i actually had about 450 watts going through it to drain the battery down quickly so that I could recharge it. And you'll notice that we've got a temperature alarm preventing me from charging the batteries. I've plugged the power cable in to charge the batteries and it's switched on, but nothing's happening. So if that's the case, then you should be aware that if you actually drain this unit quickly, you have to wait for it to cool down before you can charge the batteries. So the unit's cooled down now. I'm going to talk about charging. Now, if you look on the app we've got three modes we've got standard silent and turbo and you can change them using the app the app is the only place that you can change them so i'm going to start charging on standard so i'll click ok for standard and then i'll turn on the power and as you can see 
it has now started charging so in standard mode it's supposed to charge at 268 watts so if I change that to silent so when it's on silent it actually drops the input so that the fans don't run to keep the batteries cool so if, if you're bothered by the fan noise then it's silent that you want to run it out but you can see it's down to 105 watts so it's going to take a lot longer to charge the batteries up now the third mode is turbo and it says fast charging at a maximum of 350 watts it says note for the best battery lifespan please turn on this mode only when urgent power is needed so I wouldn't be using this normally only if I need to charge the unit up quickly for any reason but I'm going to select OK and as you can see we're up at 360 there now I believe it takes longer than an hour to charge in this mode but not much longer than an hour so it's actually a very quick way of charging the unit up so this socket here allows you to connect solar panels to the unit as well and you can use AC and solar together if you've got that combination available but as well as solar if you've got an adapter that's got an 8mm pin you can also use an adapter so long as it's within the 12 to 28 volt range now I've got an adapter that is within that range so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in as well so we'll end up with two power sources the adapter and the mains so that's 430 and the fans are starting to kick in now so hopefully you can hear that with the microphone it will charge in under an hour which is phenomenal really so I've got a 100 watt solar panel connected to the unit now via the 8 millimeter socket and at the moment you can see that it's actually delivering 78 watts so what I'm going to do is connect another 100 watt solar panel to it because you can go up to a maximum of 200 watts to 100 watt solar panels and as you can see we're getting 147 watts which is not bad if you've got no other means of charging the unit now I believe if you actually plug this into a cigarette lighter in a vehicle it'll be restricted to about 90 maybe 100 watts I'm not sure exactly but between 90 and 100 watts so it will take you know over three hours to to charge it and if you can actually get the main supply to the unit while it's got the solar panels in as well and plug it in then it's up to 430 watts again in turbo mode the power station is very well packaged and inside the box along with the portable power station there are some instructions and some more paperwork and two leads this one is a mains lead for charging the unit and this one is a lead to allow you to connect solar panels and charge via solar panels this unit arrived 61 percent charged and one of the big plus points about this power station is that the charger is built into the unit Bluetti just provide a very common IEC C13 power cable that just plugs into the mains and into the unit so you don't need to lug a transformer around with you when you're using this machine so as you can see as it approaches maximum charge the input wattage reduces probably to protect the batteries 100% that's the power bank fully charged and you can hear the fan is still running to cool everything down there is some warmth coming out of it it's not hot it's just slightly warm this is a view of the front of the unit with all the port and controls on it at the top here we've got a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket DC current 10 amps two 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter sockets and they're 10 amps as well DC current we've got two USB A sockets 5 volts 3 amps and then we've got a power delivery socket USB C which delivers 100 watts all of the DC sockets operate only one way they're all outlets so this power delivery socket cannot be used to charge a unit it's only one way and in order to turn on the DC circuits you've got to press this button and hold it in for a second as you can see the lights come on now so that's saying that this 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 and this and on the top of the unit there is a place where you can place your phone or tablet and charge it magnetically so you can see it's easy to identify where that charging point is just put whatever you want to charge on top of it and as you can see it's now charging magnetically off that point at the top one thing I will mention is to sp switch on the display you can press any button on the unit just a quick press and it will bring the display on now the display will stay on for a minute and then turn itself off again 
So underneath all the DC outlets, we've got the input section. This is an eight millimeter MPPT input, 12 to 28 volts DC, 8.5 amps. And with it being eight millimeter, you can connect solar panels up to this and you can also recharge this unit with a battery if you've got the correct fittings. So that is for solar and battery type applications. You can actually get power bricks from other companies that will charge via that eight millimeter socket as well. This is where you connect the unit to the mains. If I lift that up, you can see that the power cord goes in there. It's 220 to 240 volts AC, four amps maximum. And then this is a current protection reset. Now 250 volts, 10 amps. So if you're actually using the 240 volt socket and you exceed 10 amps, then this will trip the unit and you can reset it with this button here. This is the AC outlet socket for UK three pin plugs. 220 to 240 volts, 600 watts continuous, 1200 watts surge. So the last thing to talk about is the LED light. Now this has got three settings. If you press it once, You've got to hold it down for a second or two. That's the low setting. I've dropped it down so that you can see it a little bit better. If I press it again, that's the high setting and it's also got an SOS mode if I press it again. So three presses brings it onto SOS. This power station is compatible with the Bluetti app. So I went online and installed it. I just searched for Bluetti on the App Store, it was very easy to find and downloaded it. And as you can see, it gives you up to date information with what's happening with the power station. Now it needs a Bluetooth connection in order to connect to the unit. And as you can see at the moment, we're at 97%. The DC outlet is on, but I'm not actually using it to power anything up. So you can see the DC system is on. Now I can actually turn the DC off. There, look on the bottom of the phone. If I click that target, it turns off the DC, the DC has gone off on the machine, so you can actually operate it remotely, which is very handy. Hopefully I've shown you everything that you wanted to see in this video. I am very impressed with this product. It is a smashing piece of kit. Now, there are several things that set it above other products in this price range, one of which being the lithium iron phosphate batteries. They are a real advantage for a machine like this. It will last a lot longer than the normal lithium iron batteries. The 600 watt pure sine wave inverter is brilliant. It means you can run more equipment with this smaller machine. And the pure sine wave means that you can run your delicate electronic equipment too. So it, that is really very good. The built-in transformer for charging the machine, that's an absolute godsend. You don't need to carry a brick around anymore to charge it. It just plugs straight into the mains and away it goes. The UPS system proves invaluable as well. And it's passed through so you can charge and supply power to equipment at the same time. Now I think I demonstrated reasonably well that the solar panels are an effective way of charging this unit as well. Add to the fact that you can use turbo charging and if you've got the right equipment it can charge at 430 watts in less than an hour and that's absolutely brilliant too. I have two small gripes about it. The fact that the display turns itself off after 60 seconds is seriously annoying and I wish they would give you the option of turning the display on and off as you want it. And the other thing is that sometimes it's quite difficult to actually turn on the DC or the AC using the buttons. It's a little bit hit and miss and I dare say the more I use the uh, power station then maybe I'll get a little bit better at that. I love the fact that you can actually turn the display on just with a quick press of any of the buttons including the light so that is a good feature. But I've got to say that this is a smashing piece of kit and I hope that you found this review useful. Thank you very much for watching and please take care.